Well, if you bought yourself a Canon R6 Mark II, congratulations on your new camera. And if you want to know how to set this up for birds and wildlife photography, well, that's what we're going to cover today. All right, the first thing you want to do on the camera is you want to set the top dial to M for manual. And then you want to turn the camera on, slide it all the way over, and hit the menu button. All right, we're going to the red menu first. We're going to tab one, which is image quality. I shoot raw. So what we want to do is change that to raw and change the JPEG to null. That's how I have mine set. On tab six, this is where you can set up multiple exposures for uh, landscapes or you can set raw burst mode for the pre-burst mode which i have a whole video on that if you go through my previous videos and i'll have a link in the description to that pre-burst mode and they also have the new focus bracketing for the r6 all right we jump to tab seven and we're going to change the drive mode to h plus that's going to give us 40 frames a second we're going to come down to shutter mode we're going to change that to electronic this camera has a lot faster readout speed so the rolling shutter like the r7 is not as prevalent on this camera it still exists but not as bad all right next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the release shutter without card we're going to turn that to off the reason we do that is that if we don't have a card in the camera we do not want to take pictures because there's nothing to take a picture onto. so that will alert you that you don't have a card in the camera on tab eight, we're going to image review. This is just how I have my camera set for review duration. I set that to off because I can go hit the play button in the back to review my images. What I really hate is when I'm taking pictures and it tries to, you know, I let off the shutter, it shows me the picture and something could be happening right then and there. I'd rather just review the images after I get done taking all the pictures, then I'll review them when I want to. All right, the next thing we do, we're going to the AF operation tab, which is autofocus tab here. So what do we want for autofocus for the R6 Mark II for bird and wild photography? Well, we want two things. We want to have eye auto detect for the full screen, anything that enters the viewfinder. I want it to track it, find it, and follow it. Find its eye, find its head, find its body, whatever it can find, I want to track it. If I can't do that, I want single point, and I want to tell it where I want that point to go to. So if I can't get focused because maybe the head's obscured by a leaf or a branch, or maybe it's farther behind it, I can hit the single point, which is going to jump to the animal, and then I can try the auto autofocus or just leave the single on it for whatever I need there. So that's what we're going to set next. So in the first tab, we're going to change AF operation to servo. You'll notice we have a new menu item in here in the servo AF, or AF operation, excuse me. It's called AI focus. What that's supposed to do is supposed to determine what your subject is doing. Is it a still subject or is it a moving subject? If it's still, it'll, it'll process in one shot. If it's moving around, it's going to do the servo on the AF operation. So we're going to set it servo because we don't care about if it's stationary or not. We want it to just continually be looking and searching and, and run in servo mode, basically. Next thing we're going to set is AF area. And we're going to set that to, if I'm wearing the right button here, is we're going to set that to single point. And what we're going to do, that's going to be our AF method. Remember that. So we're going to assign a button for AF method. We're going to assign one for autofocus here in a minute. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to whole area tracking servo AF. They changed the name of that. Uh, it's the same thing as before. We're going to turn that off. The reason being is if you're in eye focus, it doesn't matter. If you're in single point or anything you're doing and you want this focus to go to that point, you have this on. And let's say the animal's eyes just off just to the right of your single point. It's not going to go to the single point. It's going to go to the eye of the animal if you have this tracking on. So we turn it off so we can control where we want our single point. That's the most important thing we found on the R7. It's true on this R6 Mark II also. Uh, we will assign a button later. If you want to turn the tracking on and turn it off, you can do that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set subject to detect. We're going to set that to animals because that's what we're going to track. Eye detection is auto. You do have the ability to set right and left eye. I don't set, leave it to auto. If you're shooting people or a dog, you can tell to sit and turn its head, then tell it which eye. But with animals, we don't know which way the head's going to go, so we just let it pick its eye for us. Switch track subject. This is up to you. I leave mine at one. If you want it to stay, say you got two animals crossing, if you want to stay on the initial subject you're tracking, leave it to initial. If you want it to switch, then hit switch to two. So I leave mine to one. I don't have much of a problem with that. Uh, focus mode AF is good. All right, 
tab two, this is the, the cases for what kind of case, how it wants to track. I leave mine to auto because I don't shoot just birds. I shoot birds and fox and moose. I shoot a lot of things. So I want it left to auto. If you shoot birds a lot and they're very erratic, you don't have a lot of subjects in front of you, so tracking four is good and you can adjust the sensitivity. And if you have things that go behind some subjects from time to time, maybe an owl flying and it goes behind trees, you want to set it on two. And you can, again, you can change your sensitivity and tracking here if you need to. I believe Dwayne and Jan Wagner, Dwayne Patton and Jan, Jan Wagner, both have things that talk more about how to set these in general. But like I said, I set mine to auto, so I don't really mess with that. So what you'll notice here, where it used to be like the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi, or the communication settings has changed on the R6 Mark II. I'm not going to cover this. Just wanted you to know that the icon actually looks a lot different now. When it's kind of a squiggly line instead of your traditional Wi-Fi thing. So just note that that's what the difference is. Why it looks different for you. All right. Next, thing we're going to go to we're going to the yellow menu, and we're going to go over to tab three. We're going down to volume first. And I set my shutter volume to one. You can leave it at two, but you can hear the difference in the volume. You'll play with that the way you want to. All right, let's get menu to get back out of that. I'm going down to power savings. So I want the viewfinder, or sorry, the auto power off. I'm going to move that to me for three minutes. Uh, set that however you want. Remember, it's going to stay on longer. I just, it, it wakes up, the camera wakes up really quickly, but I kind of like it to have a few more minutes on there. Uh, the screen dimmer, I'm going to set that to 30 seconds. Not a big deal, but that's just me. All right, tab four, we're going down to viewfinder brightness. We're going to go down here to manual. I set this to five. I set it to max brightness in the viewfinder. I found that really helps me. I have a lot of uh, different shooting conditions where the light comes and it goes, so it helps me a lot. Uh, if you feel like the LCD is not bright enough, you can change that here. I don't do it. Uh, I forgot. Change the screen slash viewfinder display. This one's important. Change that from auto one to auto two. What that's going to do is if your eye gets in front of the sensor on the back, it will switch the viewfinder, take your face away from it. It's going to go to the LCD. That's very important to do. So you want that on auto two. Next, we're going to the orange menu. And we're going to go to tab three. We're going to customize buttons. Here's the important stuff. This is the biggest part of setting this camera up, right? First thing we do is right here on the shutter button, we're going to click this. We're going to change this to metering only. What we do, we want to disable the autofocus here because we're controlling the autofocus from the back of the camera, not the front. So all we want to do is we hold this shutter button halfway. We want to do that. Why? If we've got single point and we've locked onto a spot and we hit the auto, the uh, shutter button, Remember that single point that's locked on here, and it's going to jump to a different spot if we've moved our camera around. Or if we're an eye auto focus and we hit that shutter halfway down, it's going to single point focus, and we don't want that. We want the back button only be our focus systems, right? So we're going to set that to metering only. That's all we want that button to do. Next, we're going to M-FN. This is the one where we're going to assign how to turn that, remember that subject tracking, we can turn it on and off. So if you go down here to that icon right there, it says start, stop, whole area AF tracking. Set that. Now that button up here in front of you, behind your shutter, is going to turn your subject tracking on and off. So next we're going to the AF on button. So let's select that to change it. And we're going to go down here to the IAF. That one right there. This is eye detection autofocus. There's also a new one I've noticed in here that's eye detection. That one you could sign a button which it jumps to which eye if it sees more than one eye. And the AF on detect subject, that's going to be once it detects a subject, you could jump to that spot. So if it jumps over here, you can make it jump. The eye detection AF does almost the same thing. So let's set it to eye detection AF. Now we're going down to the star button, which is to the right of the AF on button. We're going to set that one and we're going to set that one to metering and AF start. So our AF on button we had a second ago. That one's going to do our eye detect without the, throughout the frame. The star button is going to be our single point. So now we have that set up for our customized buttons. So let's back out of here. We're going to customize dials next. These are pretty much already set up for us by default, looks like. So the very first one on the top up here, that's going to be your aperture, or sorry, your shutter speed, excuse me. The next one here is going to be your ISO. And then the dial down here is going to be your uh, AV, your aperture. So pretty simple. That's exactly how I want it set. And it's by default on this one, so it's really nice. Let's get out of the menu. 
And let's go back to the yellow menu. And we're going to tab six, and we're going down to custom shooting mode. And we're going to register that setting, set it to C1, two, or three, whatever, just set it. The reason I do that is if you change in these settings and you turn your camera, turn it back on, turn it off, turn it back on, it won't remember those settings unless you've registered them in there. So guys, that's pretty much it for this camera. That's how to set this thing up for stills for wildlife and birds. Pretty simple, real easy. Uh, I've set enough of these cameras up and luckily these, uh, the R7, the R6, and the R5 are almost identical, so it's real easy to set it up. I uh, hope this video helps you. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, all those fun things in the video. Uh, we have a photo giveaway if you check the video prior to this one on the dates. Uh, if you'll leave a comment on there. Uh, tell me what camera you're shooting, how long you've been subscribed to the channel, you're entered to it. I'm going to do that drawing probably sometime this weekend, Sunday or Friday. I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly when this video is going to go out. But the video after this one will be the one for the drawing. I also have channel memberships enabled. Uh, go check that out. Anyway, guys, enjoy your Canon R6 Mark II, and I'll see you on the next video.